Hey, and we're back. Welcome back to Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Nope, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 2. <laughs> uh, this is the last level. The wind is pushing me here. Also the bats. Scooch right in. Thank you. Oh boy. Alright, I want you to imagine that every character has half the health that they normally do. And that everything takes way longer to happen. What's going on here? Oh, you can fight them off. See, again, that was a thing where I was hitting up. Okay, well, we got a duel then. That was the thing where I was hitting up, but I wasn't hitting up completely the whole way, all the way up. I like the, the way that this is set up. Where you almost, like, try to shoot those things. Whoops! Misplay. This is not happening. Damn shame. I haven't had a real game over though, that's nice at least. Ooh. That's not good. <laughs> My tank is down. Yeah, that was kind of going to happen. Okay, back in. Whoops. All right, well, we can sack off Robert there just to <laughs> just to do something to somebody. I think the idea of replacing the whip with a spear is cool, but like... I do really like the, the vibe of the whip, you know? There's something about a whip that just really works for me. It's not even like a sex thing. And the other thing is that the Castlevania whip does not carry a bunch of, um, like, connotations or ideas that, like, a traditional whip would. Like, uh, I once had a D&D &D character who is an escaped drow slave, right? Yeah, and a D I had a D&D &D character who was an escaped drow slave. And he carried a whip around. Because, you know, that is a tool of the oppressor. It is a it is a weapon used by your slave owner against you, no less. But then it's also a practicality thing because, like, slave owners don't usually have a whole lot of weapons with them. Damn. Slave owners don't usually have a whole lot of weapons with them because what if the slave gets a hold of it? Well, in this case...
in this case, they need to have the whip with them. So if you do get a weapon away from them, it'll be a whip. So yes, it was for this reason that I had a, a drow that used a whip to fight with. Ugh. Hey, candle, though. This is one where I, I mentioned in a, a previous part that I feel like there's a lot of things that just feel like Curse of the Moon 2. I can't crouch there and be safe. I have to walk. Yeah, there's some things that just feel like Curse of the Moon 2 stuff. And this is one where it's interesting. This feels like both. I know it's literally because this was a mechanic in Curse of the Moon 1. Oh boy. There are quite a few games that do emulate the original Castlevania, of course. But I'm curious now, just thinking about it. Whoops! Are there games that emulate Castlevania 4? That might be something interesting. Because Castlevania 4 is really good, but the thing is, is that, like, everything that is Castlevania 4 about Castlevania 4 is, like, so a part of the game itself. Like, why do you have such a good whip in that game? Oh, well, because you're Simon Belmont. You know, the wielder of the legendary vampire killer? God. Oh yeah, you can... You kind of can't jump onto stairs as well. Hey, alright. You know, so like, maybe that's why people don't remake it. Also, it does have a very particular art style. Yeah, so Naozangatsu is interesting because he's almost more like a DPS. Like, Robert, of course, has his range, and then Dominique has a bit more range, but she mostly has her utility of being... Damn. Uh, mostly has her utility of being, you know, this. But now that Zengatsu can just machine gun out, you know, all kinds of attacks... Okay. Yeah, just looking at Zengatsu next to the other the others, like Maybe they changed sprite artists. I haven't checked. That would be something interesting to look into though. Alright, this is a job for you. There's almost no lamer way to fight. Yes. Radical. Sorry, I'm getting too into it. <laughs> I have to keep myself humble. That was uh, real stupid, huh? <laughs> okay. Just a little one? Damn. I guess I did get the big one downstairs and then I just wasted it. Ugh. I feel like they're luring me into a false sense of security with this. Okay. Huh. 
Cool. Oh boy. Oh, that ain't good. Let's see if we can't just tank our way up. Yeah, now we have a more interesting party. Oh yeah, I guess Dominique is also the healer. By virtue of, like, literally being able to heal people. I mean, I say that like it's crazy, but, like, yes, yeah, she can do that. Really? Money? That's a little jank. I get why they don't want to make it an instant kill, but... Okay, if nothing else, we have at least hit the top here. Yeah. I also recommend looking up a speedrun of this. This, you know, like it's, uh, uh, like it's contemporaries and, um... But yeah, this, like it's contemporaries and like a lot of other, um, Epic Games speedrunners crack. If you'll pardon the phrase. Yeah, bug guy. Oh, so I guess that means that those are bugs this time, not bats. Of course, depending on what scientist you ask, bats are bugs. Should not have turned back. Would you look at that? I thought I was just botching there. Fascina. But it's one directional. Well, cool. Let's have you get it. Damn. You need one. She just needs one, you know? Let's go with that. We can have Robert to hit diagonally up. This way Zangatsu so can hit diagonally down. Okay. Cool. I know that obviously I'm on easy mode and I don't need to try as hard. But I understand that that's a little lamer. So I do like it when I can, like, play with some level of talent and quality, you know? But on the other hand, I do like tanking through things. Dropping out of the sky like a sarcophagus. Oh yeah, this is NES Final Boss stuff. He even grips the wall like a, a Contra boss. I think, I'm thinking of Contra 3, I think. Oh, 
Oh. Da gun. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, cool. Let me get myself off here. By that I mean take my face off the screen. <clears throat> Very, very classical end of a Castlevania game. Zangetsu and his comrades were in a complete state of shock. They could not believe that Dominique was someone who would sacrifice herself for others. Zangetsu realized that all along she was the one always caring for them in her own unique way. As he reminisced, he remembered that somebody needed, when someone needed their wounds treated or just a helping hand, she was always there for them. Robert felt great shame at his inability to trust the woman who had been a faithful ally throughout their journey. Despite his open contempt for her, Robert realized Dominique had been quietly, indirectly supporting him in her own way. To Robert, however, a member of the church that he loathed so much could only be evil. His deep grudge had clouded his judgment. Hachi could not understand human language, yet still understood Dominique had saved them, and wanted to go immediately to her rescue. For the first time ever, their spirits were united as one. They pledged their lives to rescue Dominique. Continued in episode two. See, this game's actually episodic, which is weird, right? All right. Hiroki Miyazawa. So yeah, um, one thing that I really will, and there's Iga. One thing that I really will say, um, I noticed this fighting the, the, the last boss a bunch of times. The reason that having a game over like that was okay in the NES era is because when you had a game over, you would start back up and it would immediately start. Like Mennonite would whip out his sword. I'm trying to think of like boss things. Like maybe a, a, a dragon or, or whatever would roar at you. But boss intros were very, very short. But to have like a, a almost cutscene like intro every time, 
and then it's unskippable. Well, now we've just reinvented unskippable cutscenes. And just, you know, having to do that over and over again was kind of uh, irritating. And granted, it was my fault for not learning the actual matchup. Because I had to learn the fight, you know. You're welcome. Thank you for letting me play. It was still pretty fun, you know. It's definitely not as good as the first one. Um, I'll show just a bit of episode two. Minty Creates. So yeah, that's Iga's new company. So I think I had, yeah. So yeah, in this one, um, God, I played this a while ago. But in this one, we just have those three. Uh, but it is a, it, it is a, you know, whole other thing, but like, it is kind of just, you know, play this again, unlock more things, find more stuff without Dominique. And then I don't even know what's in episode three. I forget exactly when you unlock Miriam. Again, um, I, I did some of this myself, and then I also saw my friend do it. Um, but I, I was just, you know, far less interested in this game. It is still definitely good. You know, I'm not going to say that it isn't. It's still a lot of fun. And then also, I'm, uh, uh, I think you get Gebel as well. Um, I don't know if Alfred comes back. If you do beat every single episode, and there are four, I think. And it looks like they even give you... Um, yeah, they give you eight on this screen so that you can have, you know, one, two, three, four, and then hard one, hard two, hard three, and hard four. Um... But yeah, um, it's it's definitely interesting. And if you do all four episodes and unlock everything and get all the secret stuff, you actually fight a secret final boss. And thanks to spoiler culture, especially spoiler culture a couple of years ago when this came out, I have already seen this final boss. It was actually the first thing I saw about this game. Just, you know. And I will say the design is awesome. It's a really cool boss. Um, but I just kind of don't have the, how do I, I just don't have the, the gusto to go through it myself. I just don't really feel like it. Um, definitely, you know, more power to you if you decide to, because it is a, a, a pretty fun game and it does feel very classic and it's very real. It feels like it should. I certainly don't think that there's anything like glaringly wrong with it. It's just that it's not as tight or pure of an experience as it was in Bloodstained 1. And then Ritual of the Night is a completely different game as well. So it's, you know, kind of hard to judge it on those merits. Um, and they've all ended up, you know, all three being a really, really... You know different interesting game they're all they're all very much their own thing but yeah um i definitely enjoyed playing it i'm happy to have played it as well i said that i would play it years ago and well now i have and i will play ritual of the night at some point i want to play with my wife though because she really enjoyed castlevania symphony of the night um but yeah until then i've been alfred this has been bloodstained curse of the moon 2 uh, sorry that I'm not, like, as, as enthusiastic this time around. Like, in general, I, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, just not as warm about this game as I, as I would like to be. Um, it just, you know, I'm like, the thing is, is that it's so okay that I can't even rip it apart. Because there are totally some games where I have ripped it apart, but, like, I kind of can't do that here. And that's unfortunate, because, like, if I had more things to say, then the LP would be a lot better. But I've just, like, I've kind of run aground here. I'm just like, 
Yeah, so uh, the second game came out, and it was like this, and, um, well, that's that's kind of it. You know, that's the problem. I don't have as much to say, and I would really like to, because I really love Castlevania, and I would really love it if there were more games like them, because they kind of don't make them like that anymore unless they go out of the way to make them like that. You know, games that play like that just don't don't just come out anymore. And that's a shame. I'm excited to see whatever Into Creates does next. Um, they have actually still been updating Castlevania, or they actually have still been updating Bloodstained. Um, when I was playing through Curse of, uh, Curse of the Moon, yeah, when I was playing through Curse of the Moon One, they actually added the character Bloodless. So like the boss Bloodless, the lady with a blood dress, the vampire woman. They added her as a playable character, and you can just play as her in this single-player Ritual of the Night game. In 3D and everything. Uh, and she's mechanically unusual, and that's... She's everything that you could want from saying, oh, you play as Bloodless. It's not a skin at all. It's totally different. And they've also been adding other crossover stuff. Uh, for those who watched my Blasphemous playthrough, Blasphemous and Bloodstain actually had a crossover at one point. And recently, I think Child of Light the sort of sequel to Res for the Kinect. Does anyone remember that? Um, Child of Light actually, I think, had a crossover with Bloodstained. Let me double check that, because I really don't want to be wrong. Child of Light, Bloodstained, yeah. And, and the reason it's like that is because... Um... It's a but. it's... The Kickstarter was, you know, ten years ago by now. Or no, Child of Light is not... Or is it? Yeah, sorry, I'm thinking of Child of Eden. Child of Light is like a JRPG. Of course, this is actually the first time I'm hearing that Child of Light is not the thing I already knew about, which means that I even... I know even less of what Child of Light is. But yeah, the reason that it's like that is because, you know, the Kickstarter was 10 years ago. So all of these things that were either being kickstarted 10 years ago or they were coming up with 10 years ago, all of them later turned into things years later. And they, they made those promises, you know, a decade ago of like, yeah, we'll put the Child of Light guy in there. We'll put the Blasphemous guy in there. Or, or you know, the Bloodstained guy in Blasphemous or whatever. Um... And it's like, it just took, it, ju it just took them so long to deliver on their promises. So suffice it to say, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night is still getting updates. And that's cool. Um, but I'm excited to see what they actually do next. Because I don't know if a Curse of the Moon 3 would be good. Because now they have so much coming from Curse of the Moon 1 and so much coming from Curse of the Moon 2. That like, the sort of baggage that you would have to go through in order to say, okay, the game is going to be like this. It would be kind of difficult, I think. But I, I am certainly excited to see what it could even look like. That certainly sounds fun. Um, but I'm really excited to see if they're going to do, you know, another Bloodstain that's not Curse of the Moon 3. You know, a, a totally new Bloodstain that doesn't have Zengetsu or Miriam in it. Because one thing that was always the strength of Castlevania was the ensemble cast. Like, okay, where's it going to be now, you know? 1400s Wallachia, Revolutionary France. Um, I'm trying to think of another fun one, but I'm blanking right now. Oh, um, Future Japan. <laughs> uh, you know, all of those are, are to Castlevania's credit. And so it'd be interesting to see new stuff. And what's more, Castlevania also has a bunch of new characters. Like, Trevor and Simon Belmont look identical in, in their uh, sprites. I mean, I say they look identical, but they look very similar. They're not strictly identical, though. They look very similar... But character-wise, they're so different. And, like, the amount of times that Trevor and Simon have shown up and, like, when they actually speak or just when you see them and they're not sprites, they're actually pretty diverse. Like, look at Smash Brothers Simon versus anime Trevor. They're totally different characters and they look really cool. And then Richter is, again, totally different. Even the two outfits that Richter has are completely different. Um, and then you have Juiced and, like, he's so not a Belmont. He looks more like Alucard than any other Belmont. But, you know, for Bloodstained, we've just had Miriam or, you know, Miriam's adventure with other cast members in her place. So, like, 
For example, you can play as Zangatsu in Ritual of the Night, or you can play as Bloodless, or you can play as the Child of Light guy. And it's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, of course. Updates to a game is always good, but at some point it's, it is very good to just be able to say, okay, the game is here, and just to set it there and leave it. And it also means that if they're doing that, then they're not working on another big game. That said, it took them forever to make Bloodstains, but, you know, I would be very excited to see what the sizzle could bring. You know, they made a lot of good stuff with Bloodstained. Um, but yeah, until then, I've been Alfred. I'm going to play Ritual of the Night at some point, and I want to play more Castlevanias. I'm just really afraid of playing three because it's the hardest one. And I already had to cheat like a dog through the other two. So I feel like it's, I owe it to myself to play through a Nest Castlevania without cheating. But that's real hard. And it's the hardest one. So, eh. <laughs> but yeah, this is uh, my last LP for, this is the last LP I'm recording for this year. Um, I guess I might have to sneak some stuff in. No, yeah, looking at my schedule, I think I'll be fine. But yeah, um, I'll see you guys later. I've been Alfred. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. I hope you enjoyed my makeup. I'll see you later. Bye.